What's happening, guys? Mike Smith here at Cal Speed Karting, and this is your Iron Man series preview for round number three. We return from a month and a half break to the Grande layout once again, but this time in the reverse direction. A driver favorite that offers high speed and plenty of passing opportunities, its 15 turns offer everything from sweepers to hairpins, and we only see it one time a year. Once again, nearly all of the top 20 will be in attendance, taking to the course not seen since round six last year. Before we take a closer look at the Grande counterclockwise layout in our track spotlight, first, some kudos to the winner from one round ago and the driver on our event pick for round number three, Paulo Franca. He was joined on either side of the box by both ends of the experience spectrum as veteran Diego Morales came home in the second spot, while up-and-coming talent Donnie Clark scored his first series hardware in third. The last time we were here, it was a two-hour event last summer, but this time it will be each driver for themselves, now, before we get to the current top 10 of points, let's jump into our track spotlight and the entry list for round number three. Once again, 15 turns, overall length, three-quarter mile. Our front straight is 475, actually the shorter of the two straights as we go from Kimbrell to Short Beach. That back straight from Contino all the way to the hairpin is actually a 565-foot run. We call it straight because it is full throttle all the way through. Your braking zone, Short Beach, Contino. Hairpin, turn four, and bypass. Uh, track record around here, a 70.5 at Apollo Franca. Once again, like I said, Grande offers plenty of speed regardless of which direction you go. With the counterclockwise version this weekend, also seeing multiple lines on offer depending on the situation. Everything from the first corner there of Short Beach to the upcoming fast sweeping entry of Contino can see everything from full shallow to wide lines being taken. Here in the Ironman series, we see a lot of the more open lines when drivers are working together, but in the early parts of the race, and certainly at the end, things are really starting to tighten up, especially as we go into the hairpin after this fast left-hander of Silk. Mid-110s the past couple of years here in the uh, Ironman. Uh, weather has been the warmest it's been all year so far, bumping up against that 90-degree mark. We could see some fast time Saturday morning with the warm track, but cool temps in the morning before things start to heat up for the rest of the day. And that is going to help out corners like what we have coming up here, turn number four, as well as bypass and Kimbrell to finish out the lap. Now, once again, the four off rule is in place as you come out of hairpin and then just there for turn number four. Make sure you guys are keeping those inside tires as close to the paint as possible. And that'll allow you to have a decent run and a lap around Grande counterclockwise. As I mentioned in the intro, we have 19 of the top 20 in points here in attendance, with only Andreas Prieto absent uh, from the usual suspects at the sharp end. That said, of the 30 drivers on the roster, only Carl Zhu is making his first start of the year, with the rest of the 29 entrants having made at least one start already. Leading the field away will be Kieran Chakraborty, while the back end of the invert lines up P19. And that driver is Paulo Franca. The 2019 series champ started off the season with a top 10 in the opener and a win last month. And while we enter arguably his best track on the calendar, it will also be his last for the season. Forced to move back to Brazil next month, his championship will end after Saturday. And you can be sure he'll be pushing to end it on a high note. And one of the drivers that could prove to be his toughest competition is round number one winner, Alyssa Yanni. Like Franca, Yanni has paired her win with a top 10, and when we look back at her previous exploits on Grande Counterclockwise, she is a podium from last summer, as well as a P6 in 2019. She was actually in the hunt for the win prior to handing off to her teammate last summer, so expect the perennial title contender to once again be at the sharp end tomorrow. Ayrton DeMoss has been driving about as good as we have seen so far in 2022, and has been attached at the hip so far with the aforementioned Yanni, first battling for the win at the opener, and then again for the top 10 in round number two. His best Ironman series finish here came in 2020 with a P7, which was also his strongest year overall in the series. He has had the pace to win, though, doing so on this track over in the Super Series last year. Diego Morales has arguably had his best start to an Ironman series season in years, backing up a P5 at the opener with a P2 last month, and actually leads all drivers in total points so far. Grande counterclockwise has been a decent track for him in the past, putting up a pair of top 10s in 2019 and 2020 before teaming up for a top 5 finish in 2021. The 2020 Series champ is another driver with a pretty consistent track record here on Grande counterclockwise, scoring a 7th, a 3rd, and an 8th in his past three events here. 
Aside from the top two in the standings, Sean Fight is the only other to couple a podium with a top 10 to start off the year, and with his record thus far on the high-speed layout, he should be another threat for the front this weekend as well. Longtime Sprint Series racer Donnie Clark made the move over to the other Saturday of the month full-time in 2021, but was not a regular runner in the Ironman Series. Of the three races he did do, two of those finishes were inside the top seven, including his best finish here with a P6 last summer. With the P11 at the opener to go with his podium last month, tomorrow will be a gauge to see if we'll expect more of the former or the latter the rest of the season. And like I said earlier, we will have no Andreas Prado for the second round with another conflict with car racing schedule being the culprit. He is on the docket for round number four, however, in April, and it will be exciting to see what he does coming from the back. The veteran of veterans, few have been racing as long as Bill Craig has uh, out here at Cal Speed, although here in the Ironman series, he's been a little bit more sporadic, many times having to come from the back. For the third year in a row, his season started off in round number two, and once again, he found himself at the front, eventually finishing just off the podium. He'll roll off mid-pack tomorrow, only improving his already strong chance at the hardware. The last of only seven drivers to score 150-plus points so far in the opening pair of events to kick off 2022, Chase Nichols started showing he could be a hardware threat in the series late last year and has carried that into the new season. He has only been on Grandi counterclockwise one time so far, but did this as part of a team to earn fifth place position in the two-hour event last summer. Rounding out the top ten of points after two events is Tyler Redman, series fixture since 2018, and no slouch on this particular track configuration either. A consistent front runner, he bounced back from an early mechanical issue at the opener to finish just outside the top five in round number two, and now heads to a track that has seen him in the single-digit finishes on more than one occasion. And has been mentioned a few times in this preview, the last time we were here on the Grande Counterclockwise Circuit was a two-hour race, and we saw a pair of first-time winners at that event. It was not only Doug Yanni's first Ironman Series win, it was his first piece of Cal Speed hardware, so this track is certainly a special one for him, and he makes my wild card list for round number three. And his teammate that day was Evan Lawrence, who while has had success in the Sprint Series and is the current reigning champ, it would be his first career win in this series. Aside from that win, this track has actually been pretty kind to him in the other championships on offer, but he'll have a bit of work to do coming from 21st tomorrow. So there we have it, the preview for round number three of the 2022 Ironman Series. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you at the track.